Kristen. Yeah. Is it on? I think it's still loading. Yep, you're live. Oh, right. Okay. We're on? It says live. Oh, fine. Oh, good start. And then press there. Oh, I know yes. how to do that. Bit. I'm not completely hopeless. Oh, I don't know. Uh, thanks very much, Em. Ah, look, sorry about that. We had a little bit of drama at the start. The technology got ahead of me, which happens all the time. Look, I'll do two things. I'll very quickly, I want to very quickly get the uh, online conference out of the way because the important part of this follows that. I'll even though the conference is important. What follows is a bit more important. But the conference um, is on in about three weeks from now. Uh, we have um, Barry Eaton and um, Mary Robble joining us this time. It's the second part of um, we're going to continue doing these lot right up to December the 21st. Second part of a series we're going to do that revolves around the prophecy of the change, the winds of change that some people refer to, and we get very specific about that. Just a couple of things very quickly that people may not fully understand. Firstly, it exists for seven days. You don't have to watch it all at once. Um, everything is different. We're not doing the same stuff as before. And you don't have to know, see the first one to pick up on the second one. We're doing different strands of the same story. And further on, it'll be all original. And we'll do that further down the piece to finish the piece off. We're leading up to that. But for now, we're trying to get across different parts of a story that comes to fruition on December the 21st at Uluru. When some ceremonies take place that inaugurate something completely different but that's later on but for now let's talk about the article i've just put up and we're going to be spreading it quite a few places it's in relation to a call that was put out to us from different people down carry on way where the glyphs are and a massive amount of other archaeology and to cut a very long story short, it just seems like this is the time when sites in Australia seem to be under threat, and that seems to be all we're covering at the moment. In this case, carry on is under direct threat, but not, it's the same. It's a different way of doing things now. It's where there's the line in the map that says that's where the sacred site is, just there. Everywhere around that map, we can do what we want with. And like um, we've heard at Juden Gorge, and I did know a Ganga Maya, in both cases they had a line in the sand where they could blow up. And past that point they wouldn't go. We're not even sure about Juden Gorge. And I've tried to say this before. You don't understand that when you go to a very sacred site, you do a ceremony just outside the site. You come in from a ley line that joins another site to another site and goes on to another site again. And all those things, it's all interrelated. When you blow up that area and you leave that little gap where the side is, you kill the place. You kill it. It's, it doesn't, you don't get it. It's not like that land. We seem to think land is something you put on a piece of paper and you write the dimensions on. That's a white fellow land. Black fellow land is like a spider web. It's all joined up. And all the ley lines join everything together. Now, what's happening this time is it's not. Yes, I do know at Canberra we're fighting against white developers who want to put a gated community in. And at Yukon Gorge, it's white Rio Tinto that wants to put a hole in the ground. But at Carry On, this, this is never a race thing. And sometimes people get the two things in. They use the word racist far too quickly this time. It's a lands council, an original lands council, wants to put a 70 house subdivision within a kilometre of 15, 20 sites, 10 of which I've listed in, in this article, and within two kilometres of another 20 or 30 sites, of which I've listed five. Now, the point I'm getting at here is there's a similar development taking place at Huskisson, where they're putting it a development for 79 people. 79, well, this will be bigger because this is 79. Most of it's just sort of up holiday accommodation. The one we're talking about there is families and relations and friends coming. There's thousands. There'll be hundreds and hundreds in that one. This one, one at Huskins and smaller. But it's interesting. The original Lands Council down there are objecting. 
And I'm just going to read basically what the objection is. And it comes from a gentleman called the Chief Council Executive um, Officer there of the Geringa Local Lands Council, Alfred Warrington, said this. His concern about this site was, was close, close to many named Aboriginal heritage sites in both Huskinson and Vincentia. Vincentia is about 10 k's away. And cannot be viewed in isolation from the broader cultural landscape. And that's what we're talking about here. The broader cultural landscape. Within two kilometres, we have listed 15 sites and four artefacts that all are of the highest possible significance and importance to original people, original culture and original history. Every one of them is. Now, my point is this. People go to the carry-on glyphs at the moment, as they wish, with good intentions, neutral intentions and bad intentions. And has there, and of course, there's the star charts, there's the star markers, there's the back shaft, there's the meditation table. There are so many other things around there too. And many, most go with good intentions, but has there been vandalism? Yes. Have there been maddocks there? Yes, they have. Have things been dug out? Yes, they have. Have things been scribbled on there? Yes, they have. Has there been graffiti between the walls where we've made the penis, which is always funny, isn't it? Yes, there has. And it goes on. Now, this is already happening. And nobody cares. Is there a drip line for the side of that wall that is obviously, obviously washing away as we look at it over the years? No drip line, nothing. Nothing's been done for the site and it's been damaged. So the solution now is bring more people in. Now, there are now people dividing to two camps, the ones who want the subdivision because it will provide some of those houses will be for original people and it will be cheap, a cheaper housing. And that's a good thing. And I'm not against that at all. I'm not even against the development as such. That's not really my issue. I've got no say in that. My say is only in the sacred sites that we work with and, and looked after. My argument is this subdivision they're talking about of 70 people, it could be lessened and you could have a place there where guides and park rangers could settle there and then go out and protect the site. You could have guided, guided tours onto the, the sacred sites and taken off with signs saying up, if you're not with a guide, don't go there. You could have a ranger there full time looking after the place so it's protected. And if you did those things, then pull back 20 houses, make some more of that going on. And I've got no issue with that, nor is anyone else. My concern is at the moment, those those people, if they want to go and stretch their legs, they can just go for a walk. And they might walk on top of a, a star marker. And they might think, well, that's okay. It's only a star marker. It probably took around about 800 percussion points to make it, but I didn't cause offence. But Honey Bev told me that each star marker there, when a boy became a man and was initiated, he would be given one of those star markers and that would be part of his totem, be part of his dreaming. And there, I, there you are walking down upon it on top of it, not causing much damage. But there are other sites there. There's one site I speak about that we've seen, and Aunty Bev claims it's the most sacred women's site in Australia. I've been there twice. I don't know how to get there, but we've got film of it. We can prove it's there. And I can't even show you what it is when I'm allowed to. She said we could only show this if this, when the site was being listed with UNESCO, not before then, so I can't. But what I can tell you is, it's a sacred women's site. It should be protected, never harmed, never touched. And I can tell you, I know what it is, and people will want to dig it out. I just know they will. And where's that? I take it's within a couple hundred metres of the boundary. And all these sites at the moment are now under threat. It's hard enough as it is protecting it. But if you're moving people in, so live next door, and some of these people, and some will, come on, there's going to be hundreds of people that will be part of this new subdivision. Don't tell me everyone's going to be perfect. Some people are going to go down there with bad intentions and come out with their heart full of contempt and do things to make that statement with a blade, with something, just to make a point. It's happened before. It's already happening now. No, this is a chance to do things differently. But what concerns me is that all of a sudden, there seems to be a massive amount of pressure on original sites. 
And you take BHP, they've announced they had about 20 sites they were going to destroy. Yes, going to destroy, but now they're going to hold it back and have a look and see how we go with it. I hear now that Rio's doing a personal inquiry where they may, they may drip feed little bits of information and tell people some of the report, what's taken place there. But the law stays the same. So what's happening at Carryong is that I believe it's one of the most important archaeological sites in the world. And it seems to me that people are just moving in, go where they want, do what they want, nobody cares. And it seems like this is a recipe to make sure the place will get trashed. Because this new subdivision at the moment, and I'm hoping that um, when they look at this article, and it was written in conjunction with others who are concerned about that, they look at the fact they've overlooked this very important point that the older from Huskinson raised about broader cultural landscape. And can I make a point? He cited Vincentia as a place that has an impact on this site. Vincentia is about 10 k's away. We're talking a couple of hundred metres away and at the most two kilometres away where there are sites that we've put up in a few pictures, have a look at some of them, that are of international importance, utterly unprotected, and open for anyone to walk in there and do as they see fit. I don't think that's right. I think somewhere along the line, original sites of high significance have to be protected in some shape or form. And if it isn't going to happen now, well, could I ask everyone, if this is the way it's going to be, why don't you just destroy all the sacred sites at once and that way get the pain over with instead of doing it this way? Where it's, for us, it started off at Eugene George. Then we found out about a site in Canberra. Then we heard about some bones, human bones found at Warragamba that no one will test in case they're human. Then we find out about this one at Carryong, and we know of others that have turned up too. There's <laughs> still no protection, still no law. Anyway, all I can say is the good side of this is the prophecy about the change, which is we're doing on the online conference. I'm absolutely convinced that's going to happen. It has to, because at the moment, nothing else makes any sense. And the mob that's running this place, they just haven't got a clue what they're doing. And if it's so bad at the moment that we can destroy any site in this country, and we've got about three or four committees coming around. And I believe Rio said that by October, there might be a little bit of word about what they've found. It sounds to me like we're going to go into committees. We're going to be groups are going to sit around and talk in circles. And at the end of it, we'll all be forgotten. We'll do business as usual. Well, it's got to change. This isn't right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, when you see that article that comes up, I would ask you, if you could please, to spread it to others, please and to get some sort of community statement about the fact we do want the sites that carry on looked after. I hope that happens soon. Bye.